Good evening, YouTubers. I am going to make tuna casserole of sorts. What I have done is I have put the peas and the chopped onion, which I got at the dollar store for a dollar. I'm putting this in the colander so that when I drain my pasta in a minute, everything is going to get immersed in that pasta water for at least a little bit. So I'll be back when I do that. This recipe calls for tuna, of course, because it is a tuna casserole. So what I have done to the tuna, this is albacore tuna. I'll show you the label. Where's the label? Omega-3s. I only buy Starkist because when I buy the other kind of tuna that we have here, the name brand, um, the hell's the name of it with the mermaid on it when I buy that one when I drain it half of the tuna goes down the drain and I don't like that so this is what I buy I had been buying the low sodium cans but they're two dollars a can and I really cannot justify that into our budget so this is regular white albacore and water and what I have done is I splashed on a little bit of Worcestershire sauce tuna and Worcestershire sauce go together like peanut butter and jelly. So if you're not adding this to your tuna, what are you doing with your life? Worcestershire sauce goes on a lot of different things, but it's especially good with tuna. To make really good tuna sandwiches, I do this in a bowl with some Hellman's and a little garlic, granulated garlic, and um, that's it for a tuna sandwich. So I'm going to put this in. I've got my pasta in there. It's not a lot of pasta. I wanted to finish up that stupid box of rotini that kept glaring at me every time I walk in the kitchen. You know what I'm saying, ladies. So this is my tuna. No, no. Tuna's going in. Um, this is the pasta, the peas, and the onion. The onion really stuck to the colander, but I got it out with my wooden spoon. So I'll put my tuna in, and I will be right back. All right, tuna's in. That's what it looks like. I used two cans due to my protein needs. I had a tomato sandwich earlier today and realized um, when I woke up from my nap that, holy crap, I didn't eat any protein for breakfast. And I was super hungry. So this is two cans of tuna. And I bet you can't guess what the next ingredient is. Yes, everybody's favorite, cream of mushroom soup. If you don't like cream of mushroom, I would recommend using cream of celery. I don't think cream of chicken would taste good in here. And I have seen on other ladies' videos of what's for dinner that they do make a cream of onion. And that really intrigued me because Mr. Zinger would eat cream of onion soup and stuff. He would never eat cream of mushroom. This is just for me. So, cream of mushroom going in. And the next ingredient may surprise you. I'll be right back. Okay, soup's in. It needs a good stir, or two or three or ten. Um, so I'm going to do that, and I'm also going to turn the heat on. Be right back with the next special ingredient. Okay, so the recipe calls for milk, but I don't have any milk. Because, again, we are leaving for Texas in less than 24 hours. So there's certain things that I needed to use up, and milk was one of them. Um, I did add cracked black pepper. I want to say don't add any salt because the soup is salty, the tuna is salty, and the Worcestershire sauce was salty. So I wouldn't add any more salt. I would add salt to the pasta water, but you already knew that. So the secret ingredient I'm using that I have to use up before we leave is going to be sour cream. There's not that much left, but it's going to give it a creamy, wonderful texture. And it's going to mellow out some of the salt that's in that soup. So I'm going to put that in right now, and I'll come back when I'm done. Okay, sour cream is in. And at this point, you really got to babysit this stuff because sour cream will turn on you. It will burn. So, sour cream is in. Let's take a look at that. Yummy, yummy in my tummy. I will add some more pepper, and I am going to add parsley flakes because the recipe that I got that I'm 
loosely following here does call for it. I did want to say, if you don't have milk or sour cream, you could put French onion chip dip in here and it would be delectable. I'll be right back. All right, parsley is in. Does not look good if you like tuna. Um, it is a little soupy, but I don't mind because as it cooks, it's gonna thicken up. And I'll show you the finished product in my bowl when I'm done. I put more pepper, but this is the finished product in my bowl. And now I'm gonna put some panko breadcrumbs over it. I'll be right back. Okay, and there you go. The only thing that I would want to do to this would be add some Parmesan, but I don't know, just not in the mood for it today. So I put a ton of panko on it because I'm going to mix it in so I get a little crunch with every bite. And that was tuna casserole. I want to say I've been making this since I was 13 in New Jersey. We got the recipe in home at class and I came home with it and made it. Everybody liked it. And... That's, I've been making it ever since, so that's a really long time. That's why I'd, you don't see a recipe card. That's why I just eyeball everything. Um, the only thing that I didn't put in here is pimento, and I never put it in. So, All right, ciao, babies.